Papa Ron, what's happening, brother? <laughs> All right. It's a beautiful afternoon today, isn't it? Yeah, oh, yeah. I know, you, and I know you've been outside working in your garden. Been gorgeous here, trying to get everything, get get all yeah, those springtime chores done, you know. Tell me about it. Yeah, that's what I'm doing to spring clean. I'm going to paint my room. I've been putting that off because I'd rather take a beating than paint. <laughs> well, get her done. Get her done. Hey, folks out there in crypto crypto maniac world <laughs> we appreciate you guys being here with us uh crypto big brothers and and then and, and uh looking at everything that we have to offer today appreciate y'all and appreciate your comments we do read them we like what we read and uh if we don't we just we just skip it <laughs> it's easier than responding back huh <laughs> Delete, delete, <laughs> delete. <laughs> well, let's get into this, I guess. It's a, it's a red day, it looks like. Yeah. Um, you know, we've had about three or four real good positive green days, but uh, I don't know. You know, you, you expect a sell-off. I mean, when everything's been down since... January sometime and now all of a sudden somebody's got three or four hundred bucks profit on a coin yeah they're gonna sell it I mean um, yeah, I, I think it's kind of expected but I'm happy to see Bitcoin still above nine grand holding tight um, and uh, actually folks we kind of formulated this uh, discussion Rod and I were talking about this last night when everything was still kind of green it seemed yesterday and uh, the title of it kind of depicts what we want to talk about today, and that's, hey, it's the buying pressure that drives the price up. So why do you think would, would bring the price down? It's the selling pressure. <laughs> yeah. So, um... Goes up, must come down. That's right. Blood, Stand sweat, and tears, baby. <laughs> so when you have more people selling... Then uh, purchasing, uh, it's going to bring the price down, right? That's just the way it goes. And vice versa. I mean, we've had a tremendous a lot of buying pressure. Matter of fact, that's kind of what we want to talk about today and where this thing's probably going to head back to. Not that Rod and I are chartists or any of that. We're not. We like listening to the other people about that stuff. Um more pros we like to listen to well they've got it figured out you know we like mr node investor and follow him some and and there's a couple other guys i watched a guy yesterday and he he kind of was pretty interesting because he kind of does it on history and and he looks at the whole time frame for example of bitcoin and it's uh -huh. done this and done this and done this and so he kind of correlates that to future and then he makes his kind of uh, predictions on that. It's kind of kind of interesting. I I kind of followed him and think, yeah, he's got something to this because it made sense to me and easy to follow. But um, anyway, we're uh, we're not in that field and no. have no desire to be in it. <laughs> <laughs> no. Sitting there and looking at charts all day. I don't know, man. We've done our time, Rod. Yeah, I'm down. I quit. Yeah. <laughs> We've looked at more P&Ls and monthly charts oh, and, gee. you know, how we can improve business and this and that. We've, we've done it. Yep. But anyway, it's kind of started us on this, um, was this article here. Uh, and this article is actually three days old now, folks. But it says, we still feel pretty confident that Bitcoin is a great risk reward and we think it could reach 25000 by the end of the year. Yeah. And there's a lot of predictions out there, and they're basing it on their formulas and how they look at it. And, you know, the majority of them seem to be positive about where it's all headed. But, but it was this headlight under the picture that, that caught our eye. Bitcoin nears 9000 Of course, this is three days ago, so it was getting close to 9000 As crypto buy orders compose 92% of the market. Wow. This goes back to what we were just saying. It's it's buying pressures what drives that price higher. And if you have 
more people wanting to buy that single Bitcoin available, you're gonna it's gonna go up. Um, it's yep. just supply and demand, and it's always kind of been that way. It's just a real basic way to look at it. Of course, you know nowadays though you got to contemplate manipulation into it. I mean, there's so many variables it seems, and <laughs> even even crypto is getting caught up into some of that stuff. <laughs> But I found an interesting guy, uh, Tim Draper, and I have read oh, some stuff about him in the past. You have too, Rod? Yeah, he's cool. I actually pulled a picture of him up here. People have probably seen him. He makes appearances on CNBC and some of the mainstream mainstream news medias. And Rod's dying to get one of his ties. Yep. Um, <laughs> I like that tie. <laughs> but this guy's a venture capitalist. Name's Tim Draper, and he got into Bitcoin back in 2014 or 15. Rod, do you remember? I think it's 14. 14, maybe July or something. Maybe it's 14 or 15. And he went and he uh, decided that uh, he was going to get into this crypto, and he went to one of these sheriff's auctions, folks. And those of you who haven't heard of that, anytime uh, some kind of federal agency or county or state makes a bust whether it be hackers or some other way where there's crypto involved, they they sell these cryptos at an auction at a certain date. And I guess the sheriff's department, whoever gets those funds, I don't know how the, the receivables work, but Tim Draper went to one of these auctions in California and he got the bid and um, he bought 29,000 some odd Bitcoins that was available for sale. And I think he paid 600 apiece for them, which came up. Did you do the math, Rod? Yeah, $17,793. $17 million. $17 million. So he dropped $17 million on 29,600 and some odd Bitcoins. So obviously he had to have had some capital available <laughs> to uh, put that yeah, in. He, yeah, he got the award back yeah. a couple, three years ago, more than that. And has he spent any of that? Has he spent any of no, that? No, what I have read is he still has that all <laughs> locked away. But if you So equate, today, at today's price, it's worth $267,869,000. <laughs> Not bad for a day's work, huh? Yeah, I mean that's just so. It's fourteen, fifteen, six, seventeen, eight, four years. He's uh, he's what? Gone Almost? from seventeen million to two hundred and seventy-four million. Uh huh. Yeah, that's something else. It's unbelievable. But wow. he is very. I think I could go to Europe on that. Yeah, sure you could. <laughs> he is very pro, folks. Very pro cryptocurrency. I want you. I want to read just a few of his statements that I've uh, picked up on. Um, and he's a he's a billionaire. He's, they consider him a tech billionaire. Tim Draper. He's bullish on Bitcoin. He has set a two hundred and fifty thousand dollar Bitcoin price target for two thousand twenty two. So in the next four or five years, he says each coin will be worth up a quarter million. Now you know we hear those astronomical figures, and it's almost hard to comprehend. Yeah. But if the whole industry converts over to a crypto and you only have 21 million Bitcoins and everybody yeah. vying for a piece of those, right. I, I don't know. And, and, you know, if we get into a hyperinflation mode or whatever it is, it, I'm not saying he's right or wrong, but, but he's got a lot more smarts in this stuff than, than Rod and I do, for sure. Yeah. So he hey, quotes to a comment here. Yeah, sure. <clears throat> I was just thinking... I was just thinking when when you and I first got into to cryptos, and that's a year ago, about a year ago this month. I think Bitcoin was uh, right around a thousand nine hundred dollars a coin, you know, and that was fourteen, and that was three years later. Who would have thought that back at the time that we got in that it would have been nine thousand dollars? Yeah, I know. <laughs> Really, you know, I mean, I was thinking, I was thinking, yeah, it'll never reach that much money. Did I mean, you buy, it'll, it'll, did it'll you buy never, your first yeah. coin around a thousand? Because I was, yeah. I was close to eight hundred, and I know I was trying to convert you there for a few weeks. Yeah, 
Uh, yeah, I, I bought it. I bought it at, uh, at a thousand something. I, I don't do, remember. Do you remember it's our little, little, first little conversation, little folks? I yeah. called. I called Rod. And I said, "Man, you've got to hear me out on this uh, Bitcoin stuff." And he, he he let me spill the guts on him and try to convert him over. And I've been into a little while. And he says, "Ron, that is nothing but a Ponzi scheme." And he didn't hang up on me, but he kind of says, adios, amigo, you know. <laughs> and then, <laughs> fine, but you'll be calling me back. I didn't say that to him. But sure enough, and about two or three weeks later, he called me and said, now, what were you telling me about that Bitcoin? <laughs> it's because he had been hearing about it now, and it was just driving him nuts, you know. So anyway. Well, you know what I really thought? I really, after thinking about it, I, I, I said to myself, you know, it, it's money in the air. That's why I thought it was digital. Positive. It's just, just it's that's digital, right. Just yeah. numbers. And, and, and then I thought, well, how do I get paid? And and how do I spend my money? Hell, it's all digital. Even though it's fiat, it's all digital. It's all over a freaking computer. So I yeah. said, eh, it could be something. So that's why I, I, yeah. I invested a little bit in it. And then I keep, and I've kept investing a little kept m- learning about it all the time. It. That's right. Yeah. Matter of fact, that reminds me, folks. We have a we have a little video again pulled up, and honestly, this thing is only ninety seconds long, Rod. So bear with us. Don't don't click over this. And maybe a lot of you've already seen it. I don't know. But it is funny. It's my favorite Bitcoin. <laughs> but it's it's called Bitcoin holders versus fiat holders. <laughs> and and this is so typical of. Uh, our kids in the early days, Rod, when we were into this, because uh, they just could not grasp. And I have one son-in-law, and bless his heart, I love him to death. But this typifies him, typifies him to the T. Always waiting for that dip. Anyway, it's only what I say, ninety seconds, Rod. It's uh, it's fifty-five seconds, folks. Okay, all right. Less than a minute. I'll try to get the volume up high enough. Yeah, I think it is. You ready? Yep. And these folks are inside of a limo here. How's it going? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. real good. good. Looking to get into Bitcoin lately. Hey, when do you think the next dip is? You haven't bought yet? No, we're, we're going to wait oh. until oh. until it dips to 5K. And then we're all in. Oh. Um... <laughs> Driver, we're done here. <laughs> we're done here. <laughs> How true is that? You know, everybody's trying to wait to save that one or two hundred bucks or a thousand. And folks, we're we're going through another little dip now, and it might not last long. And I I don't know if we'll ever see below ninety. And we might. What do I know? But um, th- this is uh this is funny. It's it's time to get in. If you don't think, look at this Tim Draper. I mean, he he and yeah, he's got a lot more money, but but um. Put the same perspective into your financial position. He drops seventeen million dollars on Bitcoin. You know what if you drop twenty five hundred or something? And uh, he's he's speculating that it's going to go crazy. Here's a couple more things he has said. Um, I am thinking two hundred and fifty thousand dollars of Bitcoin by two thousand twenty two. Per he predicted. Believe it. It's happening and it's going to be awesome. Draper also projects that cryptocurrency will take over the world within a few years because it's a phenomenon that's bigger than any technology that has preceded it. This is bigger than the internet, Draper gushed, as reported by CNBC. It's bigger than the Iron Age and the Renaissance. It's bigger than the Industrial Revolution. This affects the entire world and it's going to be affected in a faster and more prevalent way than you have ever imagined. Um, 
and he's not the only one that's singing this stuff, that this is the thing to come. And uh, we've been harping about that for a little bit. Um, but to hear these uh, these guys that know so much more and so many predictions. So, folks, and I don't know if this is a little just a motivational talk or what, but as these things go up, and, and hear this one article we had that we started with. Buy orders compose 92% of the market. Um, yeah, it's you, you got to get in while the getting's good and then hang on to it and, and let this infrastructure be put in place and built. Let all the new technology come online. Let it get it all figured out. And Rod and I know, you know, we're, we're before we're even into crypto, folks, Rod and I have studied for a long time about economic collapse and where governments and bankers are taking us. And we're firm believers on that. And this could very well be part of the reset or the re-getting finances back off the ground. Hence, that's why we did some videos on food storage and some of that stuff, but it just didn't seem to be any interest. Um, Rod, anything else to say? What do you think? I think that uh, you're absolutely right. And I think that this is the only way to go. Oh. You know, have ha on your portfolio, though. You know, crypto is awesome and, and is good, but also gold and silver. Can't say that enough either. Yeah, some metals on the side. You know, we talked yesterday a little bit about these institutional investors waiting on the sidelines. Yeah. And uh, you don't think there's still a bunch of money going to come into this? Yeah, the, the banks. Matter of fact, uh, well, that's for our next video. We're, we got something okay. to announce there too, but... <laughs> Yeah, there's institutional investors, and wait till the mass adoption hits, folks. It's still, yeah, the, the awareness might be out there, but a lot of people still aren't buying into it yet. When this stuff, when there's a tremor in the stock, I mean, talking about a substantial tremor or something in the financial industry, oh, just like in Venezuela right now, people are searching for places to put their money to keep their, their wealth intact, their the value of it. It's, yep. a, it's a natural occurrence. Yes, it is. Okay, Rod, back to you, brother. We thank you all for visiting us. Pound them like buttons. Tell us you like it. Give us a comment. Subscribe and push that bu a bell because that bell lets you, lets you know that we're, we're on. We've been there. we got a new video up. So do that too. And God bless.